What is up everybody? It is calc time and today's a big day. We're going to do U substitution applications. We actually turned all the way to page 15 of the U sub packet and this is pretty much our last lesson in the unit. Um, but it's an important one, right? We've talked about ways that we can integrate with a real situation with some context um, involved, but these are also going to include integrals where some substitution would come in handy to make the integration easier. So, your joke. Oh, I almost forget it. Um, why did the light turn red? Well, you would too if you had to change in the middle of the street. We're looking at, it's labeled homework set five. I figured today we get a little bit of your homework done together. So it says solve the real world problem and we get a hint that each one of these is gonna involve an integral. I sure hope it does. If so, we're in the right place. So can you look in the problem, read it, and underline any wording you can think of that leads you to believe that this isn't an original value function. This must be a rate of change. We must be given a derivative that we have to integrate. I can see two parts of this that actually tell me that. Can you underline rate at which this value is changing? That makes me think of a rate of change. Also these units, dollars per year. If it just said dollars, I would think this is a dollar value, but it's in a rate value, dollars per year. So this is, we're talking about a value of the machine. We could call it V of T, value with respect to time. And we are given the rate of change in that value. This must be the derivative V prime of T. And let's look at the question. If the machine was bought new for 5,000, I wonder if you could think back and decipher why they gave us that piece of info. Maybe you're thinking it'll come in handy in the end to get C. How much will it be worth? So what's the actual value in 10 years? There's a value to plug in. Okay, so there's a little, like a little code here. We need V of T, regular V of T. And in order to get that, we're going to have to integrate that derivative, that rate of change that's given. We're going to integrate negative 960 e to the negative t over 5 with respect to time. So one way to look at this, if we see it as a little bit more complicated than your average integral, and we don't have a rule off the top of our head, we can use u substitution. Same principles we've been using the entire unit. The 960 is just a constant. What are we thinking for u? Do you see an innermost part of this function? And I see e is raised to this expression, negative t over 5. That's what I'm thinking would be a good u choice. And negative t over 5 is otherwise known as, I always like to see these with the constant separate from the variable, negative 150, t, because we're about to take a derivative, du dt. This is a little different, right? Usually we've got a du dx over here. This is the first page where we're using other variables like t's, you gotta forgive me for that, but that would be the rate of change in u with respect to time. So a derivative should just be that constant, negative one fifth, and let's solve this for dt. Let's get dt by itself. So five du equals negative dt, and you get negative five du equaling dt. So here are our puzzle pieces, and we gotta just make sure we put them into the wisest spots to take this integral. Um, constant never bothered me. We'll leave it there. E to the what? E to, oh wait, do I hear Soldier Boy? Is he saying, you, right? We're gonna make it E to the U. Man, that just never gets old. And then we'll go DT, make it negative five DU. I think everything in this is going to be manageable. Negative 960 times negative 5 is 4,800. E to the U, DU. And I love integrating E. If there's anything I love to integrate, it's E because I know it stays the same. It is its own integral. So you still get 4,800 even without the integral sign. E to the U is its own integral. Here comes the plus C. And we can plug back in, right? We want V of T to equal 4,800 e to the, let's call it negative t over 5, like it was originally, negative t over 5 plus c, okay, and we're not finished, we got a little bit more to do. So with this space over to the side, check out the other wording. The machine was bought new for 5,000, that is your initial condition. When the machine was zero years old, it cost or it was valued at $5,000. So that's a plug-in for us. We can plug in zero for T and we can plug in 5,000 for the value V of T. So go ahead and do that. Let's solve for C so we can get the solution. Um, 5,000 equals 4,800 E to the zero, right? Zero over five plus C. 
I know anything to the 0 power is 1, so 4,800 plus C. And then you subtract, right? You should just get 200, C equals 200. And that should help us get a full out function. So our value function is going to be V of T equals, well, it's this stuff here with C plugged in. So 4,800 t to the ooh, e to the negative t over 5, sorry, that's a bit sloppy, plus 200. And then take what you wrote there. Let's plug in. They want to know the value in 10 years. We want v of 10. Go ahead and use a calculator. Type it in. We'll put it in dollars and cents, roughly $849.61. So same steps from the applications that we've seen before but a little u substitution in the mix. All right, a certain factory, wonder what they're producing. Marginal cost is this many dollars per unit. Do you already see two parts that indicate that this is gonna be a derivative that's given that you're gonna to need to integrate, right? Marginal cost means rate of change in cost. It means derivative of cost. Dollars per unit are a dead giveaway for derivative units as well, something per something. This thing, if we call it C for cost, this isn't C of Q, this is C prime of Q. This is the derivative of the cost with respect to Q, which I think was the number of units. So C prime of Q. Express the total production cost in terms of the overhead, the cost of producing zero units, we'll talk about that, and the number of units produced. So let's just find an integral, right? We want C of Q, the cost in terms of Q, should be the integral of three Q minus four squared. And we'll put a DQ there as well. Now I wanna admit something, right? We're deriving with respect to Q here. I wanna admit that we actually could do this in a simpler way, couldn't we? We could just FOIL this one out and integrate it with a normal power rule for anti-differentiation. Because we're having fun with U sub and because this is an easier U sub example, I'll just continue with the pattern. I'll just try to practice with it for each one of these. So I'm gonna write let U equal, and what do you got? Anything, innermost part? How about the inside of those parentheses, Q minus four, which has a quick, easy derivative rate of change in u with respect to q. This is a little weird, du dq equals the number one, derivative of q. That means du equals dq. And we can plug these guys in. So it's a quick u sub as well. You've got derivative or integral of three times u squared and instead of dq, we can write du. Now we integrate um, three, but not for long, times one third, u to the third plus c, and those will cancel. And you're just gonna get one u to the third. So feel free to plug back in now. We can say c of q equals u to the third, so q minus four to the third power plus c. And we don't have c yet, but this looks pretty good for the first part in terms of the cost, and we'll just we'll call the overhead Q for now, or C for now. Let's just leave this in terms of C, and then it gives us the overhead. Let's talk about overhead in a second. It says, what is the cost? So this is just in terms of a plus C at the end. What is the cost of producing 14 units if the overhead is 436? Now remember what the problem said. Um, overhead, cost of producing zero units. That means when zero units are produced, the cost is gonna be $436. This is your initial condition. That can be our next move, the plug-in to as we have been um, mentioning to get C. So we'll make this C of Q equals Q minus four squared. So really, we should just be plugging in 436 for the cost. So how about this, 436 equals zero minus four to the third power plus C. And you get 436 is negative four cubed, negative 64 plus C, making C $500. 500 is your overhead, it's the cost of producing zero units. Lastly, we got actually answered a question. It says, what's the cost of producing 14 units? So for C of 14, you have your equation up here, right? We can use that cost function and say it's um, 14 minus four to the third power, and instead of adding C, we'll add 500. And get that in dollars, uh, just plain old dollars. That whole thing, 10 cubed plus 500, 
should come out to $1,500 it costs to produce 14 units. Okay. All right, what do we have in store for us on this page? What wording do you see in number three that indicates that we're given a derivative, not an original function, a derivative that we need to integrate? Can you underline it? Um, find the function whose tangent has slope. If I think back to the good old days when we were first learning about derivatives, we had two quick, easy definitions. They were an instantaneous rate of change or the slope of a tangent line. So this isn't f of x. This is the derivative of f of x. This is f prime of x. Back to good old x. It says for each value of x and whose graph passes through the point 210, we have to find the function. So it passes through the point 210, that's good news. That's our initial condition. That's going to get us c in a later step. So try this. If you feel like it, write out that you want f of x to equal the integral of that derivative given. And this is a great u substitution example. Good review for us as well. Off to the side, you're going to choose what you want to let you be. I say pause the video, try this one on your own, and then come back and join me. See if you can make the right U choice. Can I make the right U choice? Well, I guess I've got two choices. It's not really going to involve the square root in this case. I feel like it's either the x or the x squared plus 5. Let's go for the innermost and the more complicated part. So we'll say U equals x squared plus 5. Derivative du dx. Solving for dx, I feel like we're back in our wheelhouse, du over 2x. dx. All right, back to the original. Um, integral of x, square root of u. Can we get that x to go away? Times, I'm looking down here at what we call dx, du over 2x. That'll do the trick, right? x's are going to cancel. And all you have left is the constant. Here's the 2 on the bottom, so the constant 1 half. And speaking of 1 half, maybe that's a good power to raise u to, to think of it as the square root of u, which is just like u to the 1 half power. All right, work your magic. Integrate it. 1 half u is going to go up a power to 3 halves as long as you divide by 3 halves. So we'll say times 2 thirds. And that will cancel to just be 1 third out front. So 1 third. Instead of writing u, we can write x squared plus 5, sub back into the 3 halves plus c, and that's f of x. But we're not finished. We have enough info in the original to get what c is and make this more of a definitive solution. So we can plug in the point, the coordinates of the point 2, 10. 2 for x and 10 for y. 10 now equals 1 third of 2 squared, so 4 plus 5 to the 3 halves plus c. I wonder for fun how much of this we could do with no calculator, right? Thinking of that fractional power. So 10 equals 1 third. This is the number 9 to the 3 halves plus C. And think about fractional powers, right? 9 to the 3 halves, we're square rooting the 9 and we're cubing what we get. So we're going to square root the 9 to get 3, cube it to get 27 plus C. We got this. Ooh, don't go away. So this is 10. A third of 27, so 27 divided by 3 is just 9 plus c. It's looking like c equals 1. If we plug that back into there, we have our final answer. Final answer is going to be this function with a 1 plugged in for c. These examples should set you up pretty nicely to try 4 and 5 on your own. I'll give you a couple pointers before I go. Keywords, keywording that this is a derivative, right? e to the 0.02t in this problem is a projection of population growth in South Korea. Um, and this is changing at the rate of. So you're going to have to integrate something. Look at this. Current population is 50 million. So when t is 0, the population is going to be, if we're counting in million, it's going to be 50. So you can plug that in as an initial condition to get c. And then you've got a value to plug into your answer in the end. So this follows the same formula that the other ones did. Same with the last one. Do we have wording that indicates that this expression is a derivative? Price of chicken, rate of change in the price of chicken, increasing at a rate of, right? This must be a derivative. So in this one, if you want to use p for price, this would be p prime of x cents per week. Um, how are you going to get C in this problem? The price of chicken is currently $3 per kilogram. So currently, when zero uh, weeks have passed, the price is $3. That's your initial condition that can get you C, and in the end, you're plugging in 8. Happy solving. After you solve these, do these two problems, and then everybody needs a break. So give me a break.
and I'll give you a break. See you later.